while, while I'm gonna talk, let's just find a foot. So help yourself up, support it however is comfortable. And if the block is making you uneven, just uh, come to the floor and just see if you can find your foot and just touch it, you know, just stroke it, squeeze it, just give it a little massage. And then you can find each toe and squeeze the front and the front, front to back on each knuckle. And then you can squeeze it side to side. You know, everybody look, deserves a little attention. And just, just do that with each toe. Front to front, side to side. And then we can take our thumbs and find our heel, find the edges of the heel, that inside corner, and that external corner. And you can probably feel a little more callousness, like uh, it's just stiffer, you know? But then you get to the arch of the foot and it's a lot, a lot more fleshy. So just move your way and you can adjust the pressure as feels good or bad. <laughs> so lighten up is always a welcome thing and find your big and little toe mounds. Just use those thumbs. Then maybe just give the toes a little pull out, a little up and down. Run your hands up your leg and we'll switch sides. So I do apologize for Tuesday if anybody showed up. I uh, I was in the wrong Zoom room. I taught for half an hour and then Amber came and found me. So, um, so let's find those toes on the opposite foot. And so just squeeze the front, front to back on each joint and work across. Trying to replicate what, roughly what you did the other one. And just try to support your leg just a little bit. Just waking up those toes. So, yeah, so I apologize for missing class, uh, but we'll do it today. So, and then we'll find our thumbs in the bite base of our left foot. And just the tougher parts of the foot, you can really just dig in there a little bit more. And this is totally up to you. You can barely touch it and that might be enough. Maybe you can do a little more pressure since you're, you're, you're your own best masseuse. And then be a little more gentle with that arch and find those soft parts, you know. It's really important, a lot of muscles, so many muscles in the feet. So just nice to pay attention for, for a moment. All right, and then as you're ready, let's find some stillness. So sit up nice and tall if you want to switch the cross of your legs. Shrug your shoulders to your ears. Let out a long exhale. Inhale, feel the crown of your head rise. If you like, you can bring your thumb and index finger to just barely touch on top of your knees. And just begin to scan your body. Notice which muscles are flexed and see if you can just release some of them. So not really moving too much, but I always tend to squeeze my glutes. So maybe it's just intentionally squeeze it all the way and then fully release it. You'll probably still be in a sitting position, pretty similar. And then just let them go. There's always a little tension in the shoulders. So feel free to shrug them up towards the ears. Gently squeeze the shoulder blades together as you feel the chest broaden and let them roll down the back. Scan through the body. Maybe you're squeezing your fingers, your palms are just clenched. I guarantee your jaw. Maybe just give it a little yawn, open up the mouth. Settle in. Come into a moment of focus. A one hour session of focus. It's really training for life. Because if you can focus better, you're more efficient, you probably seem more intelligent, you sleep better. So now we'll draw our attention to our breath and just observe it at first. Notice if it's shallow, notice where the movement is coming. Now try and imagine your diaphragm. Picture the space 
Sorry, picture yourself sliced in half like you're in the circus right below your rib cage. And that's about where the diaphragm is. So as we inhale deeply through our nose and feel the crown of the head rise, the diaphragm is pushed down. And as we exhale, the diaphragm comes up, pushing gently on the lungs. So as you breathe, just try and picture that diaphragm expanding the space and then helping gently press the air out. Each inhale, the crown of the head gently lifts, the shoulder, shoulder collarbones gently rise, chest, the ribs expand. Exhale, squeeze the navel towards the spine, diaphragm goes down. And now on this inhale, let's see if we can breathe down into the pelvic floor, into that pelvic bowl. So that's the area between your pubic bone and your tailbone and the two hip to sit bones. So as you breathe and your crown of your head rises, the air also flows in, down, opening up space through your hips. Keep this visualization. There's a lot of moving parts. Just take one at a time, one breath at a time. Let's take three deep breaths in together, in and out through the nose. Exhale fully, inhale through the nose, gently feel the crown of the head rise into the rib cage, down into the pelvic floor. And exhale, reverse the process. Belly gently squeezes in, the hips are heavy. Inhale through the nose, Slow and long. Exhale through the nose. Long and slow. One more deep breath. And this time let's open our mouth and just let an audible sigh. <sighs> Gently flutter your eyes open. That was nice. So. Yeah, I made it back to the city. Let's do some, uh, some neck rolls. So let's just let our right shoulder lean to the right ear to the right shoulder. And then just gently let the, as, it, as you move, let the chin tuck and feel, take a moment and pause with your head just hanging, open up the back of that neck. And then on your next inhale, bring the left ear to the left shoulder. Just let the head be heavy. And as you're ready, slowly let the chin roll. Move down, and if you feel a spot you just want to linger, you're welcome to stay there. Or we just move our head side to side, nice and slow. One more full cycle. So just taking our time with it. No urgency. We, of course, we can tuck our chin. If you raise your opposite arm, it'll bred a lot of intensity, potentially. And for me today, I'm just okay with this simple stretch, this gentle movement. And as we're ready, we'll sit up, feel that crown of the head rise, shake out the shoulders. And so we're just, we're gonna do some twisting. We're just gonna, we'll talk about twisting right now. And so generally, when we uh, tell you to twist, we inhale and lengthen, and then we, we rotate. And so the big part is keeping those hips nice and heavy. Like we want the, the core to be twisting. So I'm gonna instruct you today. So we're gonna take our right hand and place it on our left hip. Now sit up nice and tall, and then reach that left hand around towards your right knee as you sweep your right hand from the low hip up to the upper low rib cage. And if you feel that maybe turning on your body, 
Your gaze can go over your shoulder. Your right hand can reach for the ground. Let's inhale, unwind. We'll go to the opposite side. So left hand to right hip. And then inhale, lengthen up this to the crown of the head. And then exhale, bring the right hand to the left knee. It's like twister. And sweep that left hand from the right hip up to the low left rib cage as your gaze goes behind you. And then you can let your, your hand reach down. And inhale, unwind, come to neutral. We'll try it both times. So you don't have to do this every time, but maybe once a class when you're first getting into class, like just remind yourself, this is where the motion is. Because for me, it was just incredible when they, they told me to do this. It was like, because there was all these obliques, there's a lot of muscles there. And so if you can just like, just that tactile sensation really can help engagement. So we'll do one more time to each side, right hand to the left hip, inhale, crown of the head rises, and then sweep it over to the right, reaching up and across, left hand goes to the opposite knee, and reaching the hand back, we're gazing over that right shoulder, core is engaged, and inhale, unwind, We'll switch it over, left hand, right hip. Inhale, raise up to the crown of the head. Exhale, sweep the hand across the belly, right hand to left knee, and gaze over that left shoulder. Inhale, unwind. Very nice. So I just, I just like to take the time and, and really uh, focus on, on certain things, and then we can go through it a little faster later on. So let's come to our backs, bend our knees. We're going to do a little bit of ankle marching. Who's here? Hi there, I can't read your name, but so let's lay on our backs and bend our knees. And we're going to do a little ankle marching. So we're going to keep our heels on the ground and we're just going to flex our toes up towards our body and then place them down on the ground. And we'll put, then we'll do the opposite foot, the left foot. So just flex the toes up and place them down on the mat. And keep going, hold it for maybe a second at the top. And you feel that shin, that shin muscle start to engage. And then just place it down on the mat and feel the other side. So after about 10 rounds of this, your shins are gonna start getting tired, I hope, or maybe you're superhuman. And so just lift one foot and the toes straight up, flex them back towards the body, and then place it down. Another two more times on each side. So just leaving those heels down, flexing the toes up, and then placing them down. One more time on the left, and then place it down. And now we'll do the opposite thing. We'll, we'll stretch the top of our foot. So we're just gonna lift the heel and lift it up and leave the toes on the ground, and then set it down and do the opposite foot. For me, it's the left foot. So just lift that heel, flex and feel that stretch through the top of the foot and place it down. Lift that heel and you'll see you're, you're just feeling you're finding the different pieces of the body, noticing the different muscles that are engaged. You know, if you push through one side of your foot or the other, it engages a different part of the foot. And most of the foot muscles are leg muscles. They're all connected. Okay, so now we're gonna uh, sit up just a little bit. We're gonna bend our knees and we're gonna take our hands to our right knee and we're gonna just flex that foot up again. And so see if you can just find a place, you know, on either side of your shin bone and just find that bone and just, know, just move the foot all the way to the right, to the outside, and then move it, shift it to the inside. So keep trying to keep this, the, the, the knee bone, the leg bone the same, just do it from your ankle. You feel that edge. And that's still some work down there, but just notice the knee. And now we'll shift and we'll try and move that whole lower leg from the, everything below the knee to the outside and then to the inside. And so it's not as big a difference as your shoulder down to your wrist with that motion. But it is, it, it, there is a distinction there. And so a lot of yoga things, when the knee is bent, you like to keep that foot engaged. And it just, it's just, I don't understand it all. I'm not planning to, 
but just to explore and then you have a, a rationale for what we're doing and why. All right, let's go to the other foot. So find your hand position around the ankle so you can feel some of those tissues. Flex that left foot up. And if you're uncomfortable, let that lengthen, let the opposite foot lengthen and just draw, go to the inside and go to the outside, trying to just move that ankle. Bring it in and out. And now we'll shift and try to do, do that whole low leg. So keeping that foot flexed, when you engage it from that right below the knee, you can go a little bit further. All right, very nice. We'll come back onto our backs. I meant, to, I, I, you know how I am, doesn't matter. So let's let our feet be wide, about mat, mat width apart. And just lay down. Maybe let your hips wiggle back and forth and help all the spine unwind. Maybe bring our attention back to the breath. So as you breathe, you can feel the different parts of your body pressing into the earth. So our feet are nice head hip width apart. Let's let our both knees fall to the right and nice and slowly just to let the right knee go down, the left knee follows and the left hip will lift just a little bit. Get into that groin just a little bit. And then as you inhale, bring the knees back to center and let them fall to the left. A little windshield wiper here. So you let the hip, right hip lift up a little bit but it's not like lifting over, coming all the way in. And we'll go back and forth at your own pace, but slower rather than faster. Most of the time we do windshield pose. It's just like a, a pause. But this, just let, let the weight of your knees, feel, feel this stretch in the hip, in the groin. And a couple, two, one more time to each side. I feel my low back. This feels so nice. I was doing a little warm up today and I'm like, wow, we just got to go a little bit slower. Maybe we'll get a little bit more benefit out of this. And then bring the knees back up to center. And then we're going to let the knees fall into each other. And then once they touch, give them a little squeeze. So just squeeze the legs together. Maybe you have your hands on your belly and you can feel your core engage. And then release the legs, let them drift apart just slightly. And we'll do it again. We'll draw the knees together, squeeze those inner thighs together. And notice where the core is. And release. One more time. Press the knees together, feel the inner thighs. And of course, helping out, all attached, all connected. And now we'll release. Well, let's come up onto hands and knees. And so we'll set our knees nice and wide. We'll try and set up for a frog pose. If you did have uh, one of the coolest poses ever done is if you had a, if you have a hardwood floor like I do, you can set up your blanket on the edge of your mat. So one knee is on the mat and one knee is off of it. And then that'll help you slide. But if you don't, you can just do it. Um, like everything else, nobody can see that. And that'll just give you that, yeah. What, yeah, if you don't have hardwood floors, you can still do it. Just let your, your knees be wide. Your feet still have that flex. And so when you're here, there you go, Nikki, yeah. And here, so you can just feel that. So just start leaning your weight forward and then draw your hips back. And just keeping it comfortable with the groin. You don't have to go to extremes here to get a nice stretch. But with two knees on the mat here, they feel a little sticky. So if I, uh, when you have the right props, it's nice to be able to take it up. So maybe next year we'll be back in the studio and have all the tools at our, at our leisure.
And just finding the weight shifting, noticing all the parts of the groin, trying to keep your spine neutral. And if it comes into a curve, that's okay. But just notice. Very nice. Okay. Now we'll come out of that however we can, nice and safely and gently. We'll come on to an actual tabletop. And we're going to do it a little differently this time. Instead of just coming right into a cat cow, we're just going to try and leave our upper body the same. We're going to focus on the, the hips. And so as we find our weight distribution with our fingers spread nice and wide, just begin to squeeze the glutes and just let the blow back move. And then release that, raise the hips. Just really get that articulation through that low body, the, the hips. So pushing with the, the glutes to release and raise the hips. It's a little funny because we're used to like just going all out and finding this big curve. Let's just try and keep it simple and focused. And maybe you'll notice a difference or maybe your body just automatically does or maybe your mind just, you know, you just you're like, I'm gonna do it how I like. And you're welcome to do that, but here's another option. All right, so come back to the neutral spine. We're gonna take our elbow, to get to the front of the spine, we're gonna sink our hips back kind of like child's pose and bring our elbows right to our knees. And now with the, the movement here is mostly through the chest. So as you stabilize your arms into the mat, just push your chest forward. You're opening up to the front of the chest and just see if you can lift your forehead up. And then exhale, draw the back of your chest up and let your head come down. Letting the hips be heavy, pushing the chest forward, letting the, the head rise. And then exhale, round through it. Very different motion, but kind of cool. It's good to try and isolate these things. And for the record, I steal every class from somebody else. You know, it might be two or three people mixed in, but none of these are my original ideas. And it's pretty incredible what people have done with the human body. Okay, very nice. Let's come up to a regular uh, tabletop. So find that neutral spine. Maybe you can take one cat cow so you know what, which way is flexed and which way is relaxed. And then find that neutral spine. So extend through the crown of the head, extend through the tailbone. And make sure, look down at your wrists. The wrists are right under the shoulders. And now we're gonna just do little, little hip circles or uh, shoulder circles over our wrist. So we're gonna start by just pressing into the left pinky, finger, pinky. So press into that left fingertip and then the ring finger and the middle finger and release each finger after you press the other one. Press the index finger and the left thumb. Go to the right thumb, press down to the left, to the right finger, the pointer finger, right middle finger, right ring finger, right pinky. And just, you can do it a little bit faster than that. But as you go through your circle centered over the wrists, just push each fingertip down one at a time. You're being mindful to keep the base of the index finger and the base of the thumb down. And my upper outer arms are nice and engaged, keeping that neutral spine. So one more circle over here, at whatever pace you like. And then pause. We'll go the opposite way. So push down to the right pinky fingertip, right ring finger fingertip, right middle finger fingertip, right index finger fingertip, right thumb, left thumb, left index finger fingertip, left middle finger fingertip, left ring finger fingertip, and then left pinky fingertip. And then you can once you've found that and you identified those, then you can go into your little circles, being mindful to push down to the ring of the palm, a little extra attention to the base of the index finger and the thumb. Just 
distribute that weight. Just start to notice all the good things in life. And then come back and find stillness. And we're just gonna pulse forward. So bring your shoulders over the forward of the wrists and then pulse back. Just and move with your breath. Just finding that wrist action. Kind of like maintaining that neutral spine. So now we can push back a little bit further, bringing the hips down towards the feet. And it's a little different than just diving into this utterly relaxed child's pose. You feel the shoulders and the hips, and it's all together. You're moving nice and fluidly. And then come back to neutral. We're going to place the palms down, thumbs to the outside now. And we're going to do the same thing. And if you're uncomfortable, if you have to shorten it, so you have, if your hands are closer to the body or all the way between your knees even, you'll have less weight in the wrists and it'll probably be a little bit easier. So find your comfort zone and feel free to adjust it. And so just find that neutral spine, thumbs face out, palms down, fingers face towards you. So lean forward and draw it back. See if you can lift, leave the heels of your hands on the mat. And I just caught myself. I'm like, oh, my, my spine is, is very different. See if you can just find this balance. It's a supposedly easy, gentle movement. Okay. Let's bring our hands back to facing forward into a typical tabletop. And we're going to step our right foot out to the side like we're doing a gate pose. So the feet, toes are pretty perpendicular to the body. And now we're gonna find that neutral spine rock forward and back again. So move the shoulders in front of your wrists and then slowly move them back. This is a really incredible groin stretch for me. <laughs> I found it funny, you know, teaching at a college, I, uh, I try, it's just, nobody talk, it's hard to talk about the groin in general, in public, anywhere. And in yoga, you kind of have to. So I try and keep it civil, but it's all connected. All right, and as you're ready, you guys can stay there. If you've got the space, I'm gonna rotate. So I have space. So step the opposite foot out, mine is, mine is the left. Find that weight distribution in the hands. Find your neutral spine and find a nice gentle rock forward and back. Pushing the outside edge of that foot into the ground. I got an email at five in the morning saying the frogs were moving and I had to, and I had to go, uh, I go, went and documented a bunch of roadkill. So I don't know if that's a happy thing or not, but that's my job now. Pretty cool, pretty sad, all, all natural. It's not like I would have been extra prepared if I hadn't done that. So <laughs> this is still pretty fun, right? Okay, and as you're ready, the sides of the body are about even. Let's bring it in. And now we're gonna step our, let's start with our left foot and just step it forward and find a comfortable spot in Anjani Asana. So untuck the, the toes and wiggle the hips a little bit. So the knee can be just a little bit behind the, the ankle here. So, just notice as you push the back of that top foot into the mat, you find a different stretch. So maybe we can come up, bring our hands onto our knee. And if you keep attention to the hips so they're still square to the short end of the mat, that's kind of what we're going for. And as you're ready, maybe we can draw the pinkies in towards each other. So you open the, the back, upper back up and then inhale. Raise the arms up. So it's keeping those hips. You know, maybe you can lean into that front knee a little bit more. 
push into the back, the top of the foot. And inhale, feel that crown of the head rise. Shoulder blades wrap a little bit more, broadening that upper back. Your rib cage is drawing down towards the hip points. And the gaze might slightly rise, maintaining that space through the back of the neck. And exhale, bring the hands down and we'll switch our feet. So bring the right foot forward, find your space. So stabilize yourself, find your hips, squeeze the inner thighs together, push down to the back of the foot and then come up. Nice to do it in stages. Put your hands on your knee. You know, it's, it's once you start, you think, you think you can do something really well, that's when you really screw it up. So let's just take it slow. You can, you're welcome to do anything you want, but this is something I've learned. So just keep your breathing. Pushing down to the front heel, into the back, top of the foot. As you're ready, draw your pinkies in towards each other. Inhale, rise your arms up. And re-engage, refine those hips, push down to the front foot. Maybe you can lean into that front knee a little more. See what your body wants. Push into that back foot. Maybe we can find a little back bend. So kind of bending into the mid rib cage. So inhale, just Point the nose up towards the ceiling without crunching the back of that neck. Then exhale, plant the hands. Let's push, uh, put the feet back, tuck the toes, raise your hips down or facing dog. Take it nice and slow. Find your hands, pushing down into the fingertips and the ring of the palm, pedaling it out one foot at a time. Shoulders nice and broad. We couldn't have gotten away with that one, one downward facing dog at least. Now we'll do it again. But we'll come in, we'll also find those hips. See if your hips are nice and level. We're gonna inhale our left foot. So keep your foot flexed, toes face, pointed at the ground. So slowly lift your left foot, keeping your hips nice and level. Toes pointed at the ground, a little help, help with that. And then we're just gonna step it nice and slow. Bring the knee to the chest and step it all the way through. Low lunge for just a second. And then lower that back knee, untuck the toes. We'll return to Ajanasana. Squeeze the thighs together, find your hips, pushing down to the front and back foot, nice and strong. We're going to inhale and let our left bring our left hand to the outside of our left knee. And as we lean forward just a little bit, we're going to take our right hand to the left hip. So you're going to lean forward and open up your heart. So bring that, draw that right rib cage up and over. So finding a gentle twist. And then inhale. Return to a neutral position, your arms by your side. And we're gonna raise our right hand out. Let me get on camera. So we're, we're here in Anjaneyasana, left arm is down, right arm is out. We're gonna draw that bow back and keeping our hips nice and strong here, we're gonna extend that arm and then twist through the core over to the side. So inhale, unwind. Draw the core back. Exhale, extend that hand, sweep it across the body using those core muscles. Inhale, unwind. Draw the core back and extend. And then find that sweet, sweet twist. So hopefully you're feeling it right here. Those, you're using those obliques 
Let's take three more. So you can move with your own breath, your own intensity, and reach that right hand forward. Sweep it across. The groin is awake. The abdomen is strong. And for the record, another thing for the record, I stopped trying to move with my breath. I'm still always moving with my breath, but it's just not as coordinated as some juggler might make it. And as you're ready, plant the hands, tuck the back toes, lift the left foot high to the sky, and then set it down. Pedal it out for a moment. And as you're ready, we'll keep the flex those uh, right toes down. Inhale, keeping the hips nice and level. Slowly raise it up, three-legged dog. Finding that weight distribution through the hands, pushing down to the fingertips and into the palms, the full circle of the palm. And then round to the back, bring your knee to the chest and step it all the way through. Low lunge. Find your little wiggle, hip square to the front of the mat, and let the back foot fall. Untuck the toes, squeeze the thighs together, hands come up to the knee. We'll let our arms come down to our side. So we're stabilizing the, the hips. We're going to bring our right hand out to the outside of the right knee. And just gently move forward. My, my, my placement is about my elbow is right at my knee. And then I use my core to open the left side body up to the ceiling. So sweep that left hand across the abdomen and open that heart. Keeping those hips nice and the low body is nice and strong and steady. Pushing the top of that back foot down. The, for the right heel is pushing down, left rib cage opening up. And the neck is always in a comfortable position. Let's inhale, return to neutral. Maintain your uh, nice strong low body as we raise our left hand. Draw the elbow back and then sweep it forward and across. Inhale, draw it back, find that extension and then nice and strong, not just using one muscle. We don't just want one more muscle. We want to be, just work efficiently. It doesn't really matter what you look like. It matters what you can do. And generally, when you, when you move your body properly, you just look better because you're less awkward. It just, it just makes you cooler to know how your body works. And if we're engaging our core for these twists, we can find those same muscles for our plank, and add an extra minute to our hold. We can walk through wetlands and just do amazing things that we didn't really, we couldn't have done before we found this, these secrets to the body. All right, one more, because I just feel strong doing this. I feel my whole body really engaged. Excellent, let's place our hands down, tuck the toes, raise the right foot high to the sky, toes forward pointed at the mat, and then lower down, pedal it out. <sighs> Inhale, push down to the hands, nice deep bend in the knees, pushing down to all the fingertips, extending the shoulders away from the ears. Inhale, come up to your tiptoes. Exhale, reach those heels down towards the mat, raising the hips, full extension. Inhale, keep the left toes flexed as we rise up, three-legged dog. Exhale, round the back, bring the knee to the chest and step it through, low lunge. Find those hips, in, squeeze the thighs together, inhale, rise up, high lunge. Checking in with that front knee. Exhale, let's bounce that back foot forward and see we come right into our warrior three. Nice level hips. 
So your hands can carry in heart of prayer position. If you're nice and stable. Pushing out through the heel, extending through the crown of the head. And if you wobble, that's fine. Then inhale, draw the right knee to the chest. Come up and set your right foot down. Shake it out. Cool. So let's go to the other side. So we'll just, uh, let's take a forward fold. So we inhale, fingertips out and up. Gaze follows the hands. Exhale and fold. We gotta spend a moment here. So just bend one knee and the other, grabbing opposite elbows. Just a little bit of relaxation in your class. And now as we're ready, we'll bend down and we'll step our opposite back foot back. So I believe it's the left foot. So find your, your low lunge. Stabilize the feet, reaching down to the front heel, pushing back with your lifted back heel. I'm remembering those hips as you rise up. Keeping the right knee stacked right over the right ankle. Opening up the upper back as you squeeze your arms together or the pinkies towards each other. And then as you're ready, if you're not feeling stable or we can, maybe we can all just bring our hands to heart center. And just bounce that back foot forward and then lean forward, flexing those toes towards the mat, reaching out to the heel, reaching out to the crown of the head. Nice, long, steady, calming breaths. And inhale, draw that knee up to the chest and set it down. Take it out. So, okay, so we did all that ankle work in the beginning. So we're gonna come into a little uh, hip opener, standing hip opener. So we're gonna bring it, lift our right knee. Well, before we do that, we'll do the prep. So you spread your left toes wide, find the four corners of the feet, check in with that hip. And so bring that, really activate that quadricep pushing down into the heel. And then we bring that right knee up, bend the left knee, and place the right ankle on top of the left knee and slowly lower your hips. So keeping that ankle flexed, your hands can be the heart center for balance. Just lower those hips as deep as you want. There's always a little wobble. I haven't been doing too many hip openers, so. I'm kind of okay staying higher, but you're welcome to bring more weight into the heel and sink a little bit lower. But we're always breathing a little bit deeper. And as you're ready, you can rise up and set it down. Shake, shake, shake. And go to the other side. So. Find your right foot, engage your right hip so it doesn't go all the way out as we're trying to just stand here. So we'll raise our left knee, flex the foot, place your left ankle over your right knee, and then slowly lower down. Aida Pingala. Those are, I forget what language it is, it could be Sanskrit or Hindi, but those are the there's spiral, if you picture the base of your tailbone, and then if there's a spiral going up around all the way into the crown of your head, and then the, that's the Ida, and then the Pingala goes the opposite way. So it's just a cool image, a little like a helix, double helix kind of thing. Let's see if you can lower those hips a little more. Find your nice steady breath, your nice calm demeanor, the new you. Maybe it's the same as the old you, but you're a wonderful person. And then as you're ready, straighten that leg, shake it out. Let's come into a wide-legged forward fold. So step your feet out nice and wide. Feet can face the front of the mat, so perpendicular to the hips. Bring your hands to your hips. 
Sit up nice and tall. And as you inhale, keep your ribs tucked towards your navel as you lean back through that upper back. And then exhale, lead with the crown of the head and slowly come down. And let the hands come down. So if you have a block handy, nice to just rest there if you like. So pushing into the outside edges of the feet. And you can just drape your body, let your head be heavy. There's many variations of the Prasarita Padatanasana, the wide-legged forward fold, but you can bring your heels or your hands in line with the heels of your feet. My personal favorite. You can pray, play around with the moving your weight forward and back. But if you were to advance from here, if you could get your head on the ground and put your weight into your hands, that would be a tripod headstand. So you don't have to be goal oriented, but you can probably get a feel for how that might work. Once everything else in life is ready, you got all those upper back muscles. Now we're gonna place our right hand down, right, right below our eyes. We're gonna place our left hand on our hips, keeping them nice and level. So re-engage those legs, pushing out to the outside edge. And then keeping those hips level, let's re have our left hand find our, the front of our right hip. So we'll reach it under your body. Spread the right fingers nice and wide so there's a nice firm base. And then sweep your left hand across and up and your left rib cage reaches up to the sky. Breathing nice and deep. And then exhale. Place your left hand where your right hand was. And we'll do the same thing. Find those legs, pushing out to the outside edge of the both feet. Push it, uh, take your right hand and place it on the small of your back, just confirming that it's level. And then we'll take our right hand under the body, take the right hand to the left hip, and on your next inhale, sweep it across, lifting your low right rib cage up to the sky. Remembering your feet. And then exhale, come back down. Take a moment more to hold. And then heel toe your feet in. Bend your knees. We'll come into a squat. So your feet can be a little wider than your hips. Just coming down, settle in. If your heels are off of the ground, you're welcome to roll the back of your mat up and you can place it under. I'll just stay here for a moment. So I'm gonna not go into Shavasana today. I, I find it's a wonderful pose, but it's just a really strange dynamic for this format. So I encourage you to do uh, Shavasana at some point, but we're not gonna do it today, but we will still keep cooling down. And then come down to a seat. Extend the legs out in front of us. Yeah. If I had a million bucks, I'd hire a cameraman just to adjust my laptop computer. <laughs> so flex those toes back again one more time. Place your hands down by your side. Try to find those shoulders. And this is a staff pose and the uh, it's really engaging. So. So let, let the body go relax for just a moment. And now we're gonna engage nearly every muscle. So you're gonna flex those toes back, engage those quadriceps, so you're drawing your kneecaps up towards your hips. We're gonna open up our chest, place our hands down next to us. And sometimes it's nice to have a block if you didn't have them. If you did, it'd be wonderful. We're just gonna place our, push our hands down to the mat, keep those legs fully engaged. The core is active. Crown of the head is still rising. And exhale, release. Do it one more time. Flex those toes back, engage your legs, push those hands down into the mat. Keep the body nice and strong. Inhale, raise your arms, pinkies rotating in, open up that upper back. 
Lead forward with the crown of the head and fold. Then when you're about halfway down, then you can let your arms just drop and you can round through the upper spine. If you, if you can reach it, you can reach for your top of your toes. And you can use a little bit of leverage here to deepen the stretch, whatever you wanna do. You can't do wrong in your own yoga class. And as you're ready, walk your hands back. We'll come onto our backs. We'll do a simple twist. So extend your left foot out, draw your right knee back, and just see if you can draw it to the inside and the outside. And notice how your body gets in the way. And so if you move it to shift it to the outside of your rib cage, you can get it a little deeper. And your extended leg is not totally asleep. Still some energy reaching out through the heel. And as you're ready, we're gonna take our left hand on the outside of our right knee, extend the right hand out, palm face down, and then draw the right knee over to the left, rounding your twist. Keeping that right shoulder heavy, it's okay to lift it a little bit. If your neck is at all uncomfortable, look somewhere else where it is, look up. Well, traditionally, it's over the opposite shoulder. Inhale, start to unwind. Give that knee one more squeeze and then extend out and draw the left knee up to the chest. And see if you can grab your clasp with the opposite pinky on the outside. Just remember that yogic balance. Impossible to ever finish, but it, just a nice idea to strive for, you know? So a little balance in the world. So letting the hips be nice and heavy. Find your own space in that hip socket. A little hamstring, a little outer hip. And then we'll take the right hand to the outside of the left knee. Left arm tease out. Lift the hips as you roll. keep the left hand over to the right side. Keeping that left shoulder heavy. Gaze goes all over the opposite shoulder. Or maybe right at the ceiling. Dealer's choice. And you deal your own game in life, so at least part of it. We're not gonna get too figurative out here, I'm tired. <laughs> so as you're ready, inhale, left knee to the chest, and let's bring the soles of our feet together. And just take a moment, so moment of reflection, moment of stillness. So wiggle your hips, squeeze all your muscles, push the feet, soles of the feet together, squeeze your fists and your glutes, pushing your feet together. You can even clench your jaw for once. And then exhale audibly through the mouth, stick out your tongue and re release. Just let your knees be heavy. If your hips are uncomfortable, you're welcome to shift your feet forward or bring them closer. And let your chin tuck just slightly, let your neck relax. Release your jaw and all the tension in your shoulders. We've gone through a lot, it's been a long year and the sun is shining. We can plant our gardens again, give our hugs soon. It'll be so nice for a while at least. <laughs> <laughs> for, for a while, and then we'll have enemies again. You're welcome to stay here. But if you want more, more stretching, I forgot to do our happy baby. So you're welcome to take a moment for that. Your eyes can be open or gently shut. Just find a steady gaze, a moment of stillness.
And as you're ready, we'll begin to extend our legs out and reach our arms up over our head and interlace our hands, invert our palms, push out to the heels, find that full body stretch. And exhale, draw the knees to the chest, wrap your arms around them, give yourself a big hug. Appreciate yourself for coming to class today. And as you're ready, roll over to one side, taking a full moment of breath, a full, a full round of breath. Before you use both hands to help yourself up. Find a comfortable seat. And sit up nice and tall. Draw your palms together at heart center. We'll take three rounds of breath together. Inhale, crown of the head rises. Exhale, long and slow through the nose. Inhale. Exhale. One more full breath together. Inhale through the nose. Long, slow exhale through the nose. Thank you for sharing your practice with me today. The spirit in me recognizes and respects the spirit in you. Namaste.